Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is another video reaction on... It's a video... I say it's another video. This is my first sort of video like this, but it's sort of related to my military reaction I did on, did on the US. I can't exactly remember the title, but it did mention aircraft carriers, and they really sort of intrigued me. I asked a few stupid questions in the video, which you all actually did help me, like, learn about properly, because I know some of the things I ask are very strange, but... Yeah, this, or the aircraft carriers, they're something that do really interest me. I don't know much about them at all, if not anything, but they're huge. They're like sort of like cities in the, in the ocean, and I am interested in learning more about them because they're just, they're just a weird thing that like not many people, if you're not for like really into this kind of stuff, know about. So, I mean, hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this. We'll suggest it a lot, so I mean, hopefully you do go on to enjoy this, but let's check this out, man. I'm interested to see, like how this is explained but yeah let's just get into this the video actually is cities at sea how aircraft carriers work and yeah we're going to check this out quick shout out to my instagram and my twitter in the description and on my second channel post a lot of other sort of reactions on there if you're interested but yeah the links in the description but let's check this out and see see what this video has to explain to me and how i can learn about this because yeah this stuff really is something new for me to learn about but i'm, I'm excited to do so so yeah let's this just get into it made possible by brilliant Learn with Brilliance for 20% off by being one of the first 200 to sign up at Brilliance.org. Get his money in, you know how it is. A single aircraft carrier is enough to markedly change the level of a nation's military <laughs> might. These ships are one of the strongest single assets a military can have. In general, under international law, aircraft carriers can legally position themselves up to 14 miles or 22 kilometers from any country's coast. Oh, wow. Clearly, the strategic influence of being able to place a military airbase just miles from any coast in the world is enormous, especially given that 80% of the world's population lives within 60 miles or 100 kilometers from the ocean. God While plenty damn. of military vessels are capable of launching helicopters, there are just 19 aircraft carriers worldwide currently in service capable of launching fixed-wing airplanes. And don't the US have like half of the world's like they have like 10 of them or something, which is absolutely mind blowing. China, Thailand, India, Russia, and France each have one, Italy has two, and the US it, has the two. 11 the largest in the world. These largest carriers require over 6,000 people to operate and often stay deployed for up to a year. They are fully fledged cities at sea. Oh, the most advanced aircraft carriers like the French Navy's Charles de Gaulle are capable of launching an aircraft every 30 seconds. Oh that means that God. for a brief period, when launching aircraft at its maximum rate, the aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle becomes busier than Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. <laughs> That's incredible. To be able to achieve such a capability on a moving ship is no easy feat. While the operation of these vessels gives militaries enormous strategic advantage, they also represent one of their greatest operational challenges. An aircraft carrier's offensive weapon is its aircraft. On board, carriers tend to only have a small number of defensive weapons such as surface-to-air <laughs> missiles and machine guns. Oh, but of course, shit. just like any powerful military asset, these carriers are big targets. Honestly, like, carriers yeah. tend to only have that a small insane. number of defensive weapons such as surface-to-air missiles and machine guns. But of course, just like any powerful military oh asset, days. these carriers are big targets. It is for this reason that yes, carriers never point. travel alone while on deployment. While the exact composition can change depending on the mission, the carrier strike groups American carriers travel with are typically made up of a guided missile cruiser equipped with Tomahawk missiles, two guided missile destroyers, oh an attack submarine, and a supply ship. Jeez. An aircraft carrier is the flagship of this strike group, meaning that, in its command area, it not only has a bridge and an air traffic control center, it also has a flag bridge where an admiral commands the entire strike group. Each of the group ships serves some combination just look at that size, man. I mean, you can see it from the upwards. You see the size difference between like this and the ships. But from this angle, that is insane. God damn. Of offensive and defensive like, roles. The only they, exception they like is the supply well. ship. Most aircraft carriers don't need regular refueling. All 11 American carriers and the French one are nuclear powered, meaning they can sail an unlimited distance for 25 years without refueling. Oh Even my God. conventionally powered aircraft carriers like the UK's HMS Queen Elizabeth can travel up to 12,000 miles or 18,000 kilometers without refueling, making the need for stops infrequent. While an American or French carrier could hypothetically sail non-stop for years or even decades, what they can't do is carry enough food, which is always needed, and Good aviation point. fuel, which is needed for combat operations, to stay at sea for more than a few weeks at a time. 
it would be inefficient and place the carriers in a position of vulnerability to have always needed an also aviation fuel, you, which is needed for combat right. operations, to stay at sea for more than a few weeks at a time. Oh my it would be inefficient and place the carriers in a position of vulnerability to have to visit a port every few weeks to restock, especially during combat operations, so they don't. They restock while at sea. The supply ships that move as part of the strike group will sail off to a nearby port to take on fuel, ammunition, food, and mail, sail back to the strike group, then match speed and maneuver alongside the carrier. From there, the two ships will shoot lines across to each other. These lines are used to pull hoses over to the carrier, which are oh, used to wow. transfer aviation fuel. To transfer solid supplies, there are two methods. The first is attaching pallets to dollies that wheel cargo over to the carrier like a zip line. The second method, which is considered simpler yet That's more dangerous, incredible. is using helicopters to pick up pallets from the resupply ship and flying them over to the carrier. These transfers bring both crucial supplies like food and some less crucial items like mail, but this isn't the only way mail arrives. Oh my god on American aircraft carriers. Each carrier actually has a mailing address just like any building in the US. For example, this is the USS Gerald R. Ford address. Families of sailors can send mail to these addresses in the same way that they could to any other, and, in fact, it costs the exact same as a shipment to any other US oh address, even if the ship is on the other side of the world. Sailors can even order packages online to their ship. Expedited mail oh, often wow. makes it from an address in the US to a carrier sailing somewhere around the world in just 10 days. Having this speed requires more frequent deliveries than those of the logistic ships, but conveniently, carriers are airports at sea. American carriers currently Wait, what is this little thing? Just 10 days. Having this speed requires more frequent deliveries than those of the logistic ships. What is that? I'm get I saw like I saw them sitting there. I mean, and I know what it's there. It's to stop it's to sort of like keep the plane from like going over right but to me that looks a bit not unsafe makes it like from an address unliable. in the US to a carrier sailing somewhere like, around the world in just 10 days having serious. this speed requires more how often do these things go wrong does this, is that ever the case or are they like 100% accurate with like stopping or not accurate efficient no like are they 100% <laughs> I mean it's definitely not 100% but like how many times do these rope things I don't know what or cables sorry should I say Stopping like these planes like there's surely been cases where it's gone wrong and it's like the plane sort of went into the ocean But that's that's really interesting. I never expected that kind of technology to be the case More frequent deliveries than those of the logistic ships, but conveniently carriers are airports at sea American carriers currently use a fleet of C2 Greyhounds as cargo aircraft providing a high frequency often daily connection between carriers and shore when cruising in the South China Sea, for example, as the USS Ronald Reagan did in November 2018, mail might be sent to Singapore via conventional means. A C-2 Greyhound would then fly from the ship to Singapore, pick up the mail, and fly back to the ship. As carriers sail around the world, the pickup points of the C-2 Greyhounds are continuously shifted to nearby friendly nations. While mail does wonders for increasing crew morale, that's actually the lowest priority cargo for the C-2 Greyhounds. Oh, wow. The aircraft are integral for bringing on spare parts for all the carrier's aircraft and transporting VIPs, press, and other individuals to and from the carriers. The C-2 Greyhound is about the same size as an Embraer 145, a civilian aircraft capable of carrying 50 people, so it's not tiny. The longest aircraft carrier in the world, which also happens to be the newest, is the USS Gerald R. Ford, but even she is only 1,106 feet or 337 only. meters long. With commercial airports, a runway of 5,000 feet or 1,500 meters, okay. like the one at London City Airport in London, is considered short, while large airports like London Heathrow will have runways longer than 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters. Oh. So how do C-2 Greyhounds and other aircraft on carriers deal with having runways of only 1,100 feet or 330 meters long? They don't. They take off with just 325 feet or 99 meters of space. All US and French carriers use a system of catapults to get aircraft up to takeoff speed within what? three to four seconds. This allows these carriers to launch a decently sized aircraft like the C-2 Greyhound with their relatively short decks. What? Other carriers, like the Chinese and Indian ones, don't have catapults, so they can only launch lighter, shorter range aircraft capable of taking off with a very short runway. Oh, Both these two types of carriers have arrestor wires that aircraft catch on landing to decelerate with a short distance given. Every other aircraft carrier out there can only operate with aircraft capable of vertical landing. What takes place on the flight deck is carefully choreographed chaos. 
On American carriers, everyone's job is easily identifiable by the color shirt they wear. Yellow shirts deal with navigating aircraft around the deck. Blue shirts this are assistants to yellow shirts driving tugs, operating elevators, delivering messages, and more. Red shirts do all the handling and mounting of ammunition. Purple shirts manage aircraft fueling. Green shirts are worn by a few different groups including catapult crews, maintenance personnel, cargo handlers, and more. White shirts are also worn by a mix of personnel including those helping aircraft land, working as medical personnel, and more. And lastly, brown shirts are worn by plane captains, who are not those that fly the aircraft, they are individually in charge of overseeing all work for getting an aircraft ready for flight. The flight deck is a dangerous place given its small size. It's so small that all the carrier's aircraft can't fit on it, but of course just below the flight deck is the hangar. A large carrier can carry up to 100 aircraft, so massive elevators bring aircraft from the flight deck <laughs> to the hangar for storage when not in use. How I'm does this flow? How does this flow? Oh my god. Technology is ridiculous, man. I don't I mean there's obviously reasons why, but for me, my dumb my dumb mind, I do not how I do not I can't even speak. I don't know how this can even float. Like the the weight I can't even imagine. <laughs> What the fuck? About 6,000 people work and live aboard each American carrier. 3,200 of them have jobs related to running the ship itself. That includes everything from working in the engine room, maintaining the nuclear reactor, cleaning the decks, to actually working up in the bridge commanding the ship. Many of these jobs are below deck, and since all the above deck space is used for flight operations, many on board can go weeks without seeing sunlight. 2,500 other personnel are part of the carrier's air wing. If this was an airbase on I mean to be fair, being from the UK, I'm 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 used to not seeing sunlight for for weeks. <laughs> we never get the sun, especially in the winter. And these would be everyone working there, including <laughs> air traffic so controllers, aircraft mechanics, fuelers, pilots, and more. The few hundred remaining personnel work assorted other jobs. In terms of personal space, enlisted personnel, the vast majority of those on board, only get a single bunk in a room wow. with sometimes more than a hundred others. Higher ranked individuals though, of course have more spacious accommodations. As long term homes for thousands of people, these ships also have a few small luxuries like stores, gyms, <laughs> barbershops, lounges and more. That is incredible, so it is literally like a city. Or like a town or however you want to put it. That's pretty cool. I didn't expect them to have like stores the Space and stuff. is at a premium when 6,000 people are packed into one floating hall and the mission is paramount. Since their heyday in World War II, some have started to question the place aircraft carriers have in modern warfare. Every operating country aside from the US tend to, at any given moment, have their ships either in combat, in training, or at home. The US tends to use its carriers for a fourth function, power projection. At any given moment, there is almost certainly an American carrier cruising somewhere in the world. In fact, January 2017 was the first time since World War II that there was not an American aircraft carrier wow. on deployment. Even if there wasn't an aircraft carrier on deployment, they're fast. They have a top speed of 35 miles or 56 kilometers okay. per hour, meaning that a Norfolk, Virginia based carrier could get to the Middle East in just a week. In the Pacific, the US has an even greater advantage since it has the USS Ronald Reagan based in Yokosuka, Japan, from where it could reach the shores of North Korea for example in just 29 hours. American carriers spend plenty of time just cruising around the world's oceans reminding other countries of the USS military power. For example, the USS Ronald Reagan returned from a four month deployment from August to December 2018 during which it saw zero combat. It spent wow. much of the time cruising around the South China Sea, an area in which China is attempting to assert military control much to the US's displeasure. Elsewhere in Asia, American carriers also regularly make visits to the Korean Peninsula to remind North Korea of their presence. This reached a peak in November 2017 as tensions with North Korea reached a peak when three American carriers loomed near Korea's God shores. Damn. With their I can't blame them in that situation, I mean North Korea. It's a strange country to say the least, so you, again, I can't, you can't blame them for that, especially. I swear there was something between, like, was it, was it between, like, Kanye West and Kim Jong-un, when they, like, was it, was, oh no, it wasn't, not Kanye West, it was Dennis Rodman, wasn't it? And, like, Kim Jong-un, it's just, like, the weirdest relationship. I'm getting Kanye West because he was friends of Trump, I think, I'm just getting lost here, I'm <laughs> brambling at this point. But that's just a strange thing, like a strange friendship to happen. Isn't enormous it? power though, Irrelevant aircraft to the carriers video. represent an enormous target, especially in the era of stealthy drones and precise missiles. The sinking of a single US aircraft carrier could result in more American military deaths than the entire Iraq war in addition to the loss of tens of billions of dollars in military oh, wow. assets. While no aircraft carrier of any nation has been sunk since World War II, it's potentially more possible than one would think. US carriers regularly participate in war games where combat conditions are simulated with allies. 
There have been two concerning incidents in 2005 and 2015 where Swedish and French submarines, respectively, have won the games against US carriers. What this means is that the two countries' submarines approached close enough to the carriers where they could have, if they were an enemy in real combat, okay. launched torpedoes and potentially sank the carriers. This, in essence, proves that aircraft carriers, Look with all their defense, are not as unsinkable as some may say. <laughs> Meanwhile, the US has already received the first of 10 in a new class of carriers, while China, India, and the UK each have carriers under construction, so despite their possible obsolescence, we can be sure that the aircraft carrier won't be leaving the world's oceans anytime soon. I have a logic question for you. Um, Suppose there are two doors, and the first has a sign on it saying, if this door is safe, the other door is deadly. If that sign is oh, false- this. Um, it's crazy, I never realized how, just how sort of, much of it's not a power, like a power, power, not a power trip. I, I, I can't even get it. Like, how important these were to, like, sort of dominance, like, sort of control. I would have never guessed that. But, like, look at this video. You can understand why and how because these are crazy. They, they are supermarkets on board. Like, what? That just blew me away as well. But this was nuts. And I want to thank you guys for, just for suggesting this because I would have never, sort of, reacted to this video like i would have never thought to react to this and i would never sort of feel like i would have been inter interested in this a few a few probably weeks back and now i watch this stuff and it just blows my mind about how this stuff sort of works and just all these different things and now i want to see more and learn more but god damn god damn please suggest me some more of this similar stuff to this because i really enjoy these kinds of reactions and learning about these random sort of things i would never expect expected to learn about before i can't talk for some reason <laughs> i can't talk at all floating cities hell yes china thailand india russia and france each have one italy has two and the us has 11. why, why did you post that oh because the us is just like literally everyone everyone else is just like how can we catch how can we keep up with the us but it's crazy how much more they have than the rest of the world man <laughs> it really is us gov government so how many carriers are you going to build us navy yes you did mention the role carriers play in disaster relief when hurricanes hit the caribbean a carrier has was wired to grid to provide power and the this this is a lot i can't even speak desalinization plant up on board provided water that's pretty interesting then that's really interesting so I, I never would have expected this kind of stuff to happen so they obviously do other things than just sort of go around sort of shorelines of countries maybe that are planning to do things or something like that that's an interesting thing. I, I would have never expected that at all. The guy at 747, what are we, what are we seeing here? He's just a taste of, he's a missing dance. An airbase on land. These will be everyone <laughs> working there, including air traffic controllers. <laughs> Live it out, what a guy, what a guy. But God damn, is there any videos out there where like it shows these landings going wrong or takeoffs going wrong? I know it's probably not the most positive video to see, but I'm not going to lie, that would intrigue me because... There's got to be cases where things go horribly wrong on aircraft carriers, but maybe not. Maybe the te technology is actually so advanced, it just doesn't. But again, suggest that to me if you're watching this video at this point, because I would be intrigued in seeing that. But hopefully you enjoyed this reaction, and until next time, like, subscribe, peace.